Hello everyone, welcome back to the Action RPG lessons. In lesson number 13, we'll add a new room and set it up for a boss encounter. In games, bosses tend to be tough battles that'll test your skill in some way. Now, we have two options for where to place this room. In our puzzle room, we can either move up or down to progress to the next one. I'll show you how to set up the first option but I'll also show you what the other would look like, and you can decide which one you like better. To prepare for this room, we need to add one class and a bunch of sprites. The class is going to be for the slime boss. The first sprite is going to be the BG half sprite. I'm going to name it half BG. I also want you to add the green slime. I'm just going to name it slime. Next, we need the slime boss. I'm going to call him slime boss. And the slime boss hurt. I'm going to name it slime boss hurt. Finally, we need the swamp. I'm going to name it swamp. As a review, make sure you have these five sprites. Next, let's add the room. I'm going to call it boss room. And in order to move to it from the puzzle room, I need to look at the puzzle loop. So I'm going to copy and repurpose this code here to move to the boss room. But instead of checking the X, what I'm going to do is check the Y. Now, if you're trying to go to the top of the screen, you need to check if the Y is greater than a certain number. And that number is about 400. If you wanted to go to the bottom, you'd have to see if it was below the bottom of the screen. And that's about negative 400. And we want to go to the boss room. And then we want to set the Y equal to 350. We want to do the opposite inside the boss room to move back to the puzzle room. So we want to reverse the situation if they move past the bottom of the screen. So below negative 400, I'm going to set the Y equal to 350 and move to the puzzle room instead. So you should be able to move back and forth now. So how do we want to set up the puzzle room? Well, for that I'll show you how to do it in Sketchpad. So I've got these four sprites. Two of them are the swamp. One is the half background, and the final is the slime boss. At the bottom of the room, we're going to have the area that the player can walk around on. This is going to be where he shows up at the beginning. Next, we want to have a swamp tile. And then, the boss. Perhaps a little bit bigger. And finally, the next swamp. We're going to place this behind all the rest. And the reason we do that is we want our boss to be able to dip below the swamp and disappear. And then at some point, he'll come back up and it'll look like he's sinking into the swamp. Cool, eh? So inside our boss room start, we're going to add three backgrounds for the two swamps and that ground, that half BG, and then the boss himself. Let's start at the back and work forwards. So first I'm going to call this one back swamp, and it equals a BG class. And it's going to use the swamp sprite. So I'm going to say equals sprite and swamp.png. 
And once again, like the other backgrounds, I'm going to increase the scale just to fill the screen a bit, a bit better. I'm going to say it equals 2. And then the scale y is going to equal 1.5. Now to position the back swamp at the back, I can change its z value. I'm going to set it equal to negative 3. So it'll show up behind anything else right now. Since the next background is going to be almost the same thing, I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to call this one Front Swap. Now if you want to do this quickly like I do, double click the Front Swap name and it'll automatically highlight it. Press Control C to copy it. And then on each line, double click Back Swamp and it'll highlight that name. Press Control V. So you can quickly double click Control V, double click Control V, double click Control V to get all the lines matched up. Now the front swamp is going to be a background class. It's going to use that same sprite, same scale, but the Z is going to be negative 1. I'm reserving the Z value of negative 2 for the boss. For the half BG, I'm going to copy this again and paste it because we want almost the same code again. I'm going to call this ground because it's the ground that the player can walk on. And once again, I'm going to do my trick to replace all these. But in fact, we don't actually need this line at all because the ground is going to want a Z of zero and it starts at zero. The only other change we want to make is that we're not using the swamp.png, we're using the half bg. Finally, we want to add the slime boss himself. I'm going to name this one bossy, and he's a slime boss. Now I'm going to set the sprite and the scale inside the slime boss object, so the only thing I need to do here is set his z and it equals negative 2. So he'll show up between these two swamps. Let's go ahead and add his sprite and size in here. So we're going to say self.sprite equals sprite slime boss dot png and his scale x will say is equal to 2 and his scale y is equal to 2. Okay, that's all the objects set up, but we're going to have to position them next. If we hit play and walk into the room, the only thing that's positioned properly is the ground. We need to set up the swamp and the boss so they show up back there somewhere, so it's not just that black screen. Now, because I've tested this before, I already know the numbers that we need. If you didn't know the numbers, you could easily guess and check by adjusting their Y values and seeing how it looks. The back swamp needs a Y of 260. The front swamp needs a Y of 50. And bossy needs a Y of 250. And just like that, your level should look something like this. Now, if you wanted to reverse this and instead go down to reach the boss room, you just need to reverse the order of things. So in Sketchpad here, as you can see, you want the room at the top. And then a swamp and then the boss, and then the other swamp. And it'll look something like that. The final thing we want to do is learn how to limit the player from moving. We don't want him to move on the swamp, or even to reach the boss. We want to stop him once he reaches this point. In order to do that, we need to add some code in the loop. 
This code will be very similar to how we check the Y position and then set the room. I want to check if the hero's Y is greater than zero. That'll put him at about halfway through the room. And if so, all I'm going to do is set his Y to zero. So if he manages to get to a Y of one or above, I'm going to force him to move back. And just like that, in the boss room, he won't be able to move past the middle of the level. He gets trapped. These kinds of limits are very useful for keeping your player on the screen. For example, I can walk off the screen over here, but I don't really want that. So what I can do is use the same code and modify it. I want to see if his x is greater than, let's say, 500, we're going to set the x equal to 500. And the same thing for the left side. We're going to say if it's less than negative 500, we're going to set it equal to negative 500. And just like that, I've got limits for my room. He can't move past these trees. Perfect. He can move back to the puzzle room though. Now this is where things get interesting because I can still walk off the screen in this room. So in each room, you're going to want to set up these limits. The next lesson is going to focus on how to code that boss to get him working. I'll see you there.